What if Steve Gould, a rare bird, had replaced Peter Gabriel in Genesis? 1975 was a strange year in the history of the band Genesis. The band's current album, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, had received mixed reviews. Some critics calling it a masterpiece, while others said it was overblown and pretentious. The same went for the elaborate stage show to promote the album. Me, I loved Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, but I did think, how do they follow this epic album? The answer came very much out of the blue. After much speculation, Peter Gabriel left the band. At one point, the music press reported that the band were considering carrying on as a purely instrumental band. Then the next minute, they were auditioning stacks of singers. Now, one of the main contenders in those auditions was Steve Gould from the band Rare Bird. Now, I first came across Steve and Rare Bird in the summer of 1974, when I went to see a Bartley James Harvest show and Rare Bird were the support. That night, Rare Bird blew the roof off the Hammersmith Odeon. Probably one of the most exciting, dynamic bands I have ever seen. After that, brilliant performance. Poor Bartley James Harvest just couldn't follow that, and everything that they tried to do was an anti-climax. Now, soon after that gig, Rare Bird started to appear at the marquee. One night a week, for almost six months until they disbanded in early 1975. Every one of those gigs in the 300 capacity marquee was absolutely packed. By then Rare Bird were a four piece with bassist Andy Ray and drummer Fred Kelly providing a phenomenal driving powerhouse rhythm section. Keyboards were played by Dave Caffinetti, who went on to play Vic Savage in the movie Spinal Tap. Steve Gould took lead vocals, played rhythm and lead guitar. Mike Rutherford was also a huge fan, calling the band one of the best live acts on the circuit at that time. And how this band never became hugely popular was a mystery. So, could Steve have fitted into the Genesis sound? Yes, he possessed a powerful dynamic set of pipes, probably one of the best rock vocalists I've ever heard. Though by 1974, Rare Bird had opted for a more rock pop sound. Back in their early days, late 60s, early 1970s, as a fully fledged progressive rock band, Steve demonstrated he was more than capable of handling the complexities of singing progressive rock. Take a listen to Beautiful Scarlet from 1970. While the style is more Emerson, Lake and Palmer than Genesis, you can get an idea of the power of Steve's voice. Though probably some better examples are from 1972's Epic Forest album. The tracks Her Darkest Hour and Fears in the Night. For me, these two tracks show that Steve would have been an excellent fit for Genesis. Then throw into the mix also that Steve was an excellent bassist, rhythm guitarist and lead guitarist. But as we all know, it didn't happen. Phil Collins got the job and the rest, they say, is history. But even though Steve didn't get the Genesis gig back in 1975, much earlier in the band's career, it seems he was instrumental in getting the band a recording contract with Charisma Records. In February 1970, Steve Gould was so impressed by Genesis's music that he mentioned them to a friend and producer, John Anthony, and asked him to listen to the band. John was then producer of Rare Bird, having worked on their hit single Sympathy, which was also the first ever release on the Charisma Records label. John was looking for new talent, so he went to see Genesis when they played at Ronnie Scott's in March 1970. He came away very impressed and asked Tony Stratton Smith, the owner of Charisma Records, to see the band the following week. Tony was very, very impressed by what he saw and heard and clearly saw their potential and signed Genesis in April of 1970. 